Hi, um, my name is Kazuma Obarar. First of all, um, I really appreciate Gabriela and the museum in San Telmo Museo uh, to invite me. And today I'd like to talk about the photo book and especially how to do storytelling with photo book. Um, so since 2011, I'm start working as photographer, but slowly and slowly, I have faced some difficulties to tell the story uh, through the newspaper and magazine because there is some limit to tell the story. We can use five to ten images on the magazine and text is uh, limited. So I really try to shift the other way to tell the story with the book. So today mm. I introduce some of the book and as well as my book, which will be published this November uh, from Barcelona-based publisher, Editorial RM. Uh, so maybe I will talk 45 minutes and then I will, if you have some question, please let me know. Um, okay, so. Okay, so I start from these images. Um, before being photographer, I was working in a financial company in Mitsubishi. And 2011 March, tsunami and nuclear explosion was happened. And then I quitted my job and started heading to disaster area. And my hometown is located just um, 100 kilometers from coast. So actually, we have a, I have a lots of friends who live in disaster area. So I really wanted to do something for my friends and for my friends' family. So at the moment, when I was working, working in a um, financial company, I was in Kyoto, uh, which is located south part of Japan, and then uh, three days after the disaster, I quitted my work and heading to North. And this picture was taken uh, 16th of March, 2011. Oops, sorry. And this is uh, my best friend's hometown, which is located in Miyagi Prefecture. And this town is completely destroyed by tsunami and my best friend's grandfather were missing. And finally, we recognized he died in 2012. And slowly and slowly, I started taking pictures from disaster area. And at the moment, I just, I try to say I'm a professional photographer, but actually I just quitted my financial worker. So I'm, telling professional, but I'm, I'm really scared to tell I'm real professional. But I really want to tell the story in disaster area, so I just try to continue to take pictures in disaster area. And then I came across one of the workers who worked in nuclear power plant in Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant in July 2011. This is four months after the nuclear disaster in Fukushima. And I noticed um, now almost 3,000 people are working in nuclear power plant every day. And at the moment, also 3,000 workers were worked in nuclear power plant. And then what I noticed to talk with them is most of the, half of the worker is lived in disaster area, the restricted zone. And because of the disaster, he, they lost their job. And there was no way to work in the other place. So they have to work in nuclear power plant after the accident. So what I found in there is victims was working in nuclear power plant. So and at the moment, there was a huge problem for the workers because the workers doesn't reveal 
it, it is very difficult to reveal their face on the public because if the workers start speaking out something about nuclear power plant, they might be fired by Tokyo Electric Power Company. So they are really afraid to be revealed in the public, but at the moment they are really facing really harsh situation. So I really wanted to do something with them. And one of the workers asked me to enter the nuclear power plant in August 2011, because um, until the end of 2011, no press couldn't enter the nuclear power plant. The government and Tokyo Electric Power Company controlled all information until the end of 2011. So my friends who worked in nuclear power plant asked me to enter as worker. Then I wear the white cross and got into the nuclear power plant as worker, but uh, I just pretended the workers. And then what I saw in, inside a nuclear power plant is a really hard situation. Like uh, this is a listing place, which is located 200 kilometer from number one reactor. And number one reactor had a huge explosion. And this is our inside our resting place in toilet. And not only the toilet, whole walls were covered by pink. But I don't know why, but anyway, um, most of the people have to rest in this resting place. And they put off their mask in resting place. But this place is already contaminated. And radiation level is uh, almost 100 times of normal background level. So they have to eat something in this place, but at the moment they have to do also, they have to be exposed by radiation. So when I get into the nuclear power plant illegally, um, I decided to reveal their face to the public because <clears throat> um, there's no reason not to publish their face because there's no law to punish them if they reveal on the public. So I, I just decided to ask um, to the workers to allow me to take portrait. And then finally, I met around 100 workers who worked in nuclear power plant. And 30 workers allowed me to take portrait and tell me their name and age and their experience in nuclear power plant. This became my first work as a photographer and published by a um, publisher in Switzerland. And since then, I start doing my project related to nuclear issues in all over the world. And this is a book. And since 2011, I try to start um, reveal their situation. But at the, at the moment, um, I have uh, some question about photojournalism. I just try to do very direct representation about nuclear issues. But, uh, but, uh, but what I found is uh, it is really difficult to say something about, like about future. What will be happen for next 20 years or what will be happen for next 30 years for their health? With picture is quite difficult just using my image, Im imagery. So I try to shift different way with different subject. <clears throat> and 2014, um, I started a new project about World War II. And I just show my photo book. And this is a story about the children who are injured by bombing by US during World War II. Uh, not the story in Hiroshima or Nagasaki. More than 400 city was completely destro destroyed by normal bombing. And so many children became disabled person or orphan. Oh. 
and it might be difficult to see it, but there are there is small red dots in the map. So from south of Japan to north of the Japan, except Hiroshima and Nagasaki, most of the place was most of the capital city was destroyed. And in this project, what I found that what was the problem of my um, approach was actually I cannot any I cannot feel any sympathy any sympathy for my subject and the people who are exposed uh, who injured by bombing because so for example. This was uh, almost first experience to see the one of the injuries. And she was bombed by bombed when she was six years old. And when I see her injuries, actually I was amazed. I couldn't feel any, almost anything when I see these injuries because these injuries look like I already saw through the movie or through the, some magazine or newspaper. This injury is not so strong enough to move my heart. So when I see these injuries, I really thought I have to do something different, new approach about the injuries because my same generation might be, might have same feeling about this subject because every day we saw 100 or 1,000 images through Facebook, Twitter. So I saw direct representation about injuries doesn't work, especially for young generation. So what I try to do is uh, I try to find some pain from found images. And I did my research in this topic, and finally I came across these pictures. And it should be a little bit difficult to find it, but uh, so this is uh, Mrs. Anno. Um, she was injured by bombing when she was six years old, and she lost her left leg. And what she does uh, when she was 12 years old is so this is class pictures, and she was sitting the front line, and this is her. And this is a replica of her original picture, and this black and white image is, is, comes from her friends. And this is obvious, um, there's no left leg in these pictures. But what I found, from this picture is she painted her own leg and also she folded pictures to hide left leg. So when I saw this, when I found these images, images, I really felt um, my feeling was really bad. I can sympathize some similar, I, I can imagine what she saw, what she felt when she was 12 years old. And since then, I tried to find similar images from her album. And like light pictures, she also did same things. And all of them are the same. So when I found those images, I saw this direction is this direction might work for especially young generation, people who didn't experience war, because this is the way. Um, this is much maybe easier for us to imagine their pain. So I tried to find the other elements from the found photos. But actually, I a little bit add more detail about this topic. <clears throat> 
So, as I said, um, four, more than 400 cities were, were completely destroyed by bombing. And since then, so many children became disabled or orphaned. And after being disabled person, those disabled person tried to hide from the public because they faced huge social discrimination after being disabled person. <clears throat> so, and it was continued until now. They tried to hide during these 70 years. So most of the people doesn't recognize those victims. But since 2008, actually in this book, in my project, there is seven victims. And those big seven victims try to speak out their experience because they saw the current situation in Japan, maybe in the other countries, far right wing is very strong. And they felt it looks like uh, before starting war, before starting World War II. So they wanted to stop this kind of situation and they start speaking out their experience. But until then, their pain and their existence were completely invisible for the public. So my idea was I tried to reveal their hidden history during these 70 years. Then I start approaching about this direction, try to find some pain from the um, found images. And this, those pain is completely invisible. So, <clears throat> what I try to do in this project is the another approach is uh, just try to compare the two gesture to behave when they are private place or when they are in the public place because they try to behave normal person as much as possible because when they behave like disabled person in the public space they have faced the discrimination so like this this is mrs anno and now she has artificial leg so her pain her disability is completely invisible now but um, this is the way she has an artificial leg in private space. So I try to understand their gesture, how to try, how to behave um, to hide their injuries. So this is another case. Uh, this is Miss, Mr. Hamada. Uh, when he was 15 years old, her body was completely burned by bombing and her hands and face was changed because of the uh, bombing. And, you know, this is her, his, his gesture is uh, every time like this, uh, the light hand is on left hands, on right hand. But actually what he tried to hide is this. So I try to compare those two different situation and also I try to recognize her different gesture. Like this, um, this, this is Mrs. Anno. When she was two hours born baby, she was born by bombing and her left, her left leg was gone. And since when she was 15 years old, uh, she had her artificial leg on left leg but it is very difficult to find it. But how, <clears throat> so, okay, so her left, her, her left leg is artificial leg. And actually this artificial leg try to straight forward when she doesn't anything about her left leg. So when she sit, she every time has to do like this. The every time right leg is on left leg to avoid the artificial leg will be straightforward. So I try to find those gestures to, be, to behave like normal person. Because as I said, they try to hide from the public. 
So even now, it is very difficult to recognize who is disabled person or who is, yeah, who is disabled person in the public space. So if we recognize their gestures, even if we cannot find their injuries directly, maybe we can have some imagination and we can distinguish who is disabled person in public space. So that is my idea and I, I try to compare those two images and I also try to find their, their gesture, very subtle, but um, I thought it is very important for me. So just back to this picture. So as I said, um, since I have a, I tried to reveal the situation of nuclear workers, I faced the difficulties to represent their problem in direct representation, by, repre di by direct representation. So what I tried to do in this project using by book, for a book, is uh, I just try to make a replica and I just try to insert to the book. And then people can have our pictures, like our seeing the album from Mrs. Anno, and also people can forward like Anno did when she was 12 years old. So this kinds of physical feeling is quite important for, I thought this kinds of physical feeling is quite important when for the leaders to imagine their traumatic experience. So in this photo book project, I do these kinds of things in the other way. So, I also try to make another replica. So, and this is a disabled passport for disabled person. And what I try to do is, uh, I just try to make a replica and I just insert it here with photo book corner. And why I try to do this is uh, actually this disabled passport doesn't help disabled person, especially those people who experienced war. Because um, this, disabled this disabled card can get anybody. So even if I had an accident, I can get this uh, disabled passport. So anybody can, this, anybody can get this passport. But like uh, Hiroshima or Nagasaki, they have a, a specific card, like Hibakusha card, this is uh, for the, especially for the Hibakusha who experienced atomic bomb. But especially for the, the victims who experienced normal bombing, they have no specific, no specific passport uh, because of their strategy of the government. So I tried to make a replica of the passport and this is very thick, very thin, and I think people cannot recognize any importance from this paper because um, it is very thin. It's, and this is a like yellow passport. So those things I try to repeat. And also I try to do the other things. So there is, as I said, there is seven victims in this photo book. But only five victims have this disabled passport. And what I try to do for the other two uh, victims is uh, I just try not to insert this passport because those two persons is an uh, uh, orphan. So those who experienced bombing, but those who have not physical injuries in their body is that 
they don't have no clue to, pro to prove their injuries or their damage. So I just try to put the, the photobook corner and then people recognize, people can compare with two different type of person who experienced, oh, sorry, who experienced uh, bombing and people became disabled person or, sorry, um, uh, people who experienced war but uh, there's no injury, physical injuries. So I tried to do those kinds of things in this photo book. And this was uh, my ideas. This is not kind of very photojournalistic uh, approach, but I saw this is, might be, um, might be better for, especially the people who have no experience of war. So I tried to make this kind of book. And actually, um, this version was published by publisher, but at the first moment, I made a handmade photo book. And this photo book is a 45 edition. 45, this edition have 45 copies. And I also want to make some meaning of the number of the copies. And so 45 is a, the, the end of the World War II. And my idea was I made 45 handmade edition. And also the publisher will publish um, 1,900 copies. So combining those two different two numbers, finally um, we can publish 1945 copy. So that was my first idea. And also what I have to say is uh, actually when I make handmade photo book, uh, first purpose was to submit this photo book to Supreme Court. I didn't mention that, but those seven victims, when they speaking, when they speak out their experience, they also start suing the government because during these 70 years, they try to hide from the public and they are completely invisible from the government also. So there is no compensation from the government. So when they start speaking out their experience, they also start suing the government. And at the moment, um, I also start approaching them. And then um, they are just waiting the Supreme Court judge. So they were refused twice in local judge and high court and just they are waiting the final judge when I approach them. And then one of the women who lost her left leg asked me to submit her injuries picture to Supreme Court because there was no opportunity to show their injuries at the moment. So they, so they really want the judge to see their injuries before the final judge. So um, I don't want to show just only, I, I don't want just showing her injuries because from my experience, when I just see her injuries, I couldn't feel, I couldn't move my heart. So I really want to make a something which make judgment, judge's heart moving. So finally I decided to make a photo book and I also insert so many things to make judge to feel something more yeah. <laughs> yes. So there's our another meaning of the book. So this is a fabric, and especially my original handmade photo book. This was made by Tweed Cross, and Tweed Cross meaning of the trend of 1970s fashion in Japan. So as I said, those people try to hide from the public but they also have to earn the money. So what they do during these 70 years is they try to make a clothes in their house, in their apartment, because this is the best way to hide the 
hide from the public. So I try to explain their job or their situation, um, the time, 70s, 90s. So finally, I try to make a hard cover by tweed cover. So my ideas of the book is that we can make, we can put many meanings of the book on the book. So I think the the book will be some very important object to explain many aspects of the subject. Okay, so sorry, sometimes I'm a little bit complicated to speak up. <clears throat> but I just, I try to explain to one project, actually one, but uh, I have, a, I made two books, so just talk about it. <clears throat> And this is uh, about the story of Chernobyl nuclear accident. Uh, this accident was happened 1986, 26th of April in Ukraine. At the moment, uh, Ukraine was a uh, Soviet Union, of course. Oops, sorry. And before start explaining about my project, I just try to explain the current situation of Chernobyl. So this is a hashtag uh, related to Chernobyl. I collected hashtag from Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. And what you can see is, uh, you can see the red words, like a photo of the day, fun, traveling, tourism, vacation, and zombies and ghosts. And why those words came up on the Facebook and Twitter is from 2011, the Ukrainian government opened the zone. Actually, from after the explosion, those areas became the restricted zone, and only the workers could enter the zone. But from 2011, the U.S. Gov the Ukra Ukrainian government opened the restricted zone, and now more than 10,000 people are visiting Chernobyl nuclear plant as tourists. And 2020 or 13, this Chernobyl Diaries was launched. Uh, this is Hollywood horror movie. And you can see um, the ghost in Pripyat. Uh, the Pripyat is located just one kilometer from nuclear power plant. And currently, this is totally abandoned village. And since then, there are so many ent entertainment related to Chernobyl nuclear accident. And this is very well-known computer game named Stalker. As you s can see, so there are some zombies and monsters. And through this game, people have to kill the zombies in this prepared city. So those entertainment were start dispatching, start uh, selling in all over the world. And again, the Ukrainian government opened the restrict zone for anybody. So for example, if I can pay $100 or $200, you can stay there and you can go to prepare Chernobyl nuclear power plant. And then currently, so many people are doing selfie and making some images in front of Chernobyl nuclear power plant. And there are so many images. So when I saw those images at the first moment, I really thought if I did direct representation of Chernobyl images, especially for young, sorry, especially for the young generation who knows Chernobyl nuclear power plant as entertainment, those images might be just entertainment. People cannot recognize as journalism or as problem. So I thought I have to do very different representation about Chernobyl. And then I just came across one film. 
and actually this film. And this film was made by Ukraine um, a late 80s. And this is middle format, middle color format Ukraine film. And this film was found in Pripyat city, which is located one or two kilometers from Chernobyl nuclear plant. And my friends who guide me to enter a nuclear power plant or guide me to go around the Pripyat city, he used to live in Pripyat city when he was young, and he went back to Pripyat again and again until now. And finally, in 19, late 90s, he found 300 films in Pripyat city. And he gave me some roles. And I tried to play these films, and finally I gained these kinds of abstract images. And when I saw these images, I thought this is maybe my way to go forward. And at the same moment, I met the one girl, actually women. Uh, she's currently 30, 31 years old. And she was born five months after the nuclear power plant, which means she was in her mother's bury when the nuclear accident was happened. And it was, um, so I met her in 2015, March, and she explained her disease. Actually, she removed thyroid, all, all of them, and now she's a disabled person. But actually, her scar is a nothing anymore. So actually, we could not find any heart disability when, I, when people saw her. And there is a, another problem of the thyroid disease. Until when she became 19 years old, she was diagnosed as depression because this thyroid disease is very similar to depression or mental problem. So, um, since then, um, when she was, until she was 90 years old, so she, she have no imagination to connect her disease to Chernobyl nuclear power plant. But one of the doctor diagnosed as thyroid disease. So now, then she starts thinking about the connection between Chernobyl and her disease. And she removed her thyroid uh, when she was 23 years old. And since then, she has to take 10 to 20 pills every day and to maintain her hormone balance. And it will continue when she will be die. But uh, again, this, her ability is completely invisible for the other person. And then, at the same time, I came across this film and actually, and finally, I could gain these images. So, I, so my I, my imagination is uh, uh, combined with these abstract images and her interview about her invisible history and about her Im invisible disease. I think it might be a very strong representation for readers because. Um, yeah, again, if I do direct representation, it might be entertainment for, especially for young generation. So, if I put some text with these images, um, these abstract images give some space to the leaders to think, to, immer to have imagination about her invisible disease. So, I make this type of um, abstract images. So almost all images were exposed four minutes to eight minutes because this film is very old. So it was possible to do longer exposure. And about the book. <clears throat> So 
So when I start my project about this, um, I try to think about the format. Um, actually, in this project, the text is quite important to explain her invisible life, her invisible history. So I want people to read the text in this project. So this book format became, finally became the paperback size to read the text. And also, I try to follow the design of the, this film. So, the film is like this, and my idea is a. Uh, I want follow my experience like as photographer. So actually, this book is uh, covered by this sticker like this. And people have to break the book like a photographer. We have to break the sticker and open the film. And we insert the camera. And like that, people break the sticker and open the book. And then my idea is when people open the book, the light inside to the film, there is a negative here and light into the here. And then her invisible st story starts like a novel. That is uh, my ideas and try to make the book like this format. So for me, the book is uh, quite important. So the book can give some physical um, emotion to the leaders. And if I work with magazine or only newspaper, this kind of same, this kinds of things is almost impossible. So when I, since I start making the handmade book of this project, I try to develop the ideas with the book. And I believe this is a kind of new way of storytelling for me. And I felt strong potential to tell the story. Yeah. And now I just want to introduce some more book, uh, which Gabriela <clears throat> contribute to this. The library, sorry. <clears throat> Diferentes maneras de crear y diseñar libros, ¿no? Diferentes narraciones. Eh, no sé si queréis pasar, os, os paso un poco los libros, os, os enseño un poco. Yeah, so. Now, I just want to show some more images. Can you help me? Yes. So this is about the cigarette in China. So as I said, now many of Many people try to shift very new storytelling. So this is a story about the cigarette and the party, the wedding. So the format is uh, the package of the cigarette. This is very unique. And at the first edition, maybe people are, the publisher was selling with cigarette, the real cigarette. Yes. Yeah. And then the other book. So this is also unique. So this book is uh, selling with vinyl. And this is a very beautiful photo book, which was taken in the glaze. Yes. Yeah. And this sound was recorded at the same place. And 
And then the artist tried to make our, the music and the photo book. So these kinds of things. Y entonces, eh, bueno, sacó, esto se presenta como si fuese un poco un fichero policial, ¿no? Más o menos, o, bueno, no con las... Y buscó imágenes, bueno, en internet, en, en televisión o de los famosos que no aparecían nunca, ¿no? como si fuesen un poco las eh, fotografías de, las de, de la gente buscada por policía, ¿no? de los wanted, un poco, bueno. Y bueno, entonces él pone, bueno, esto es sin gafas, pero en fin, pone en realidad eh, dónde trabajan, el salario, lo que ganan, pone informaciones que normalmente no solemos aprender, no, no, suelen, no nos suelen enseñar nunca. Y bueno, es un libro que ganó un premio también de, un premio importante en París Foto, eh, luego, al final del libro, pone un mapita incluso donde se pueden encontrar las señas ¿no? donde, donde viven todos estos personajes tan famosos, pero que no sabemos nada de ellos. Bueno, eh, os paso el libro por si queréis. Eh. And this is a, and this is, and this is a like a, this is an accordion book. So, People try to make a very different style of the book. And okay. yeah. this is not new, but uh, this is a story about the funeral train with Robert Frank Kennedy. And we are really interested in the format. Uh, this is a story about the funeral train. So this format is like train. So photographer Paul Fusco continued to take capture the images from the train one by one. And people are people read the book like like taking a train. So the format and the material, the paper, and like my book, the way open the book, everything has a meaning and everything is related to the subject. And nowadays, um, especially young generations, try to make these kinds of similar book. And it might be, we can say trend, I don't know, but uh, yeah, so many, Photographer is now, especially for my friends, is not only my friends, um, try to shift from very direct photojournalist way to more like a artistic way because of the reason um, some direct representation is, uh, we don't know. Um, so from my personal opinion, the direct representation is, I sometimes I cannot find any power to tell the story. And the situation of the world is really complicated. It is totally difficult to explain the situation, only one imagery. So try to have more three-dimensional approach, or how do you say, the multiple layered story might be able to told by this kinds of storytelling way. 
So. <laughs> okay. Do you work with a designer? Because maybe a lot of photographers now, in the moment to make a book, work with a designer. But you design yourself all the books. You yes. Work alone. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um. Yeah, I'm working alone, and sometimes I work with designer. But the uh, idea is, comes from my experience. And as I show the example of this paper or the passport of disabled, those comes from my experience. If I see these images, when I see these images, I really feel really bad, I really sad. Those physical experience gave me the ideas how to make a book. So um, actually the designer is quite important for the detail and but basic ideas come from comes from my experience as photographer. Yes, so or maybe we can ask some question. If ¿Tenéis algunas preguntas? Creo que hay un micrófono suelto por ahí. Podemos pasar, si no, también los libros para que vayáis viéndolos, si queréis. Bueno, son todos ejemplos eh, bueno, muy distintos, cada uno a su manera. Eh, bueno, formatos sueltos, eh, con vinilos, para que veáis. Eh. So, I think now you can see so many books and maybe people can feel the books. And like this book comes from my friends, and this is a story about the reclut in Japan. Mm -hmm. People have to register in one or two company when we look for their job, each job. So it is not typical Japanese, uh, typical book style but people feel more like are the recruiting and people can know the different culture using the material. I think this is quite important. So the subject is really, we have real diversity. There are refugees, the Muslims, um, identity, hunting job. The subject is quite different, but still people can understand the subject because I believe because of the materiality, people face very new culture, but thanks to the materiality, um, those materiality help to understand the situation or different cultures. So I believe the book is a very strong format. And yeah. So this is also Ah, yes. Uh, so, actually, I have uh, one more book about the train. <clears throat> Just I try to explain a little bit.
So this is a story about the workers who worked in nuclear power plant in Chernobyl. <clears throat> Since 1986, the work in Chernobyl, the cleaning work, is uh, handed down generation to generation in one family, like a, so, so this is a story about the history. So 1970s, USSR, the Soviet Union, decided to build the city, Pripyat city, to build nuclear power plant in Chernobyl. And 1986, Chernobyl nuclear accident was happened. Then, the workers who built nuclear power plant have to evacuate from Pripyat city to the other place. And then, Soviet Union decided to build a new city, which was called Slabutic. And since 1987, um, the government, Soviet Union, decided to build the railway and train which head to Chernobyl nuclear plant and back to their hometown, Slabutic. And this train is still, and current worker is still using the same train and same railway. And if you take a train, um, if, when I take a train, I recognize um, so those people are sitting same seat during these 30 years. And as I said, this cleaning work in Chernobyl is handed down to generation to generation. So in some case, his son is sitting, his son will sit after he quit his job. So like this, this job is handed down generation to generation in this train. So I found, I thought, this train is kind of metaphor of repetition. The cycle of the repeat, which continue to almost forever, because um, the cleaning work in Chernobyl will continue 100,000 or uh, 100,000 years. It will continue 100,000 years, because half lives of nuclear element is uh, 100,000 years. So people have to care long, long years. And then people have to also work for long years. And this is a, yeah, so, and then I found the metaphor in this train. And the question, uh, why uh, this format? Um, I just take a picture only in the train to tell the story about this repetition. As met, yeah. So maybe some people have our RFK Paul Fusco's funeral train book. And as I explained, the format of the book is uh, longer. It's uh, like a landscape size. And this size gave me some feeling of the train. It's like a leader is taking a train and lighting a train with workers. My idea is, uh, yeah, it gives some feeling to take a train. So I decided to, I decided this format. And <laughs> yeah, so if you have some question about the book or project, No hay preguntas. Okay, no questions. How much time do you usually invest designing and conceptualizing your core books? Thanks. Um, usually, in this Chernobyl project, it took two years to. He preguntado cuánto tiempo eh, invierte diseñando y conceptualizando sus libros. Um, in this project in Chernobyl, it took two years to complete my project. And every time what I try to develop my project is uh, at the first moment when I start researching, I start making the book. In the first dummy book, there's no my images. There's just 
the images which I found from my research. And I continue these kinds of things from first step, second step, third step. So from second or third step, I try to take a pictures because um, I start thinking about my direction. So I add some more images to third dummies, fourth dummies, and then finally, um, this book was um, made it by my hands. So yeah, it took two years to design and whole process. Yes, and um, I could not bring my dummy book this time, but um, in my way to develop my project, as I said, I make a different type of dummy book every time. And what I try to do is, uh, in every dummy book, there is so many empty pages because um, the picture is not enough, the idea is not enough. Then there's so many blank pages in one book, maybe 10 or 20 blank pages, there's nothing. But, and then I wrote something about ideas or why I cannot proceed my project or I write, I write down any kinds of ideas or maybe I paint some images, some imagination. Then I try to proceed to next step. That is my ideas and I continue these kinds of things 10 times, 15 times. Then, yeah, the project will be finished. So um, you are very concerned about the reader and reaching the reader and somehow moving the reader. Uh, but at the same time, your books are handmade and this is a limitation. So how do you cope with this? I know that in your first book, you have a publisher that makes 1,900 books, which is, I guess, it's, uh, it, it's, um, it reaches your goal to arrive, not to get all these uh, young people. Uh, but if there's not this possibility, how do you cope with this? How do you deal with that? You mean if I made only 10 books by my hands, this is no visibility to the public? Yes. Um, yes, that is a huge question. So, so for example, when I did my project, um, I made 86 copies, 86 box sets. And fortunately, the publisher can publish 1,900 copies. But still, it's around 2,000 copies, and only 2,000 people can have these copies. So compared with the magazine, newspapers, it's really weak. But um, my idea is uh, just not only the photo book. I have to do very different approach, not only photo book, exhibition, and maybe um, video on the website. I think, um, but why I did these kinds of things is uh, I can develop my ideas, and this is my um, object, which I can represent my ideas. So this is very important as starting point. And then idea will apply to exhibition, the space, or the magazine, or website. So yes, as you said, the, only the book, I think, doesn't work to tell the story to many peoples. But as starting point to think about the subject, I think it does work, and, and then I have to shift the other way. That is my ideas. You have an exhibition right now in, in Barcelona of the prints of, of exposure. Yes, um, yeah, yes, last weekend yes. I had an exhibition in Barcelona. Mm -hmm. Yes, so yeah, those kinds of things mm -hmm. I have to continue 
in different <laughs> ways, different ideas. Okay, thank you. Bueno, si no hay más preguntas, nos vamos a despedir, dándole las gracias a Kazuma. Thank you very much for coming. It was a pleasure. Big opportunity for us. Y muchas gracias a todos por haber venido a esta primera, diremos, estamos todavía un poco aprendiendo, eh, pero bueno, ha sido una experiencia. Muchas gracias.